So now we're going to cover something that normally we don't usually cover when it comes to talking about brand new lines, but it's something that's so significant here and different than stuff that we've had in the past, not to mention the new, I guess, pack-in theme that's going on here that's worth addressing, and it's going to be a little bit of a part of our collecting aspect and maybe the secondary market too in the long run, and it's that of Transformers War for Cybertron's Kingdom packaging. Now, they brought up the fact that the... Transformer line for years and years now, they've been trying to figure out a way to reduce the use of plastics in the packaging, more specifically the clear bubble on packaging. And we see now with the Deluxe, the Voyagers, and the Leaders for Kingdom here, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be reducing significantly the window on the side of the packaging. Normally the window for Deluxes, the Voyagers, and the Leader class have made up, usually on the one side that would have the window, it would make up, I would have to say, about 90% of the packaging on that one side. Now it looks like it's reduced to almost that of 30 or 40 percent. So pretty much you see usually the the torso and upward torso and that's about it really of the figure. And I mean this is this is always you know a good and or bad thing because it's good for the environment but for us it's like well we can't really tell if our product has good paint on the lower half then. I mean, if you're a Japanese collector, I mean, that was just how the world was for you. A lot of Transformers you bought in Japan, they're in an encased box. You don't know how the paint applications are. It was a roll of the dice. But for us Americans, we like to kind of, you know, look at our packaging in stores and see if the paint apps on the face are good. At least we could see that much. We could see the paint on the face, on the chest. So we're still kind of good, but at the end of the day, it's it's also going to be kind of worrisome for people that swap toys and stuff like that and, and all the shenanigans that go on with that stuff. But that's one thing to bring up. The next thing is their new kind of, of packaging style that they're doing. So they're going to be going with uh, solid hangers for the deluxes instead of just a clear plastic hanger. So now they're going to be cardboard hangers, which that right away is going to be, I wonder how long those are going to last in the market. Maybe they'll have a, a plastic firmer put behind it still. But a lot of uh, the deluxes that we got, like, let's say, Earthrise and Siege, uh, they've always had a plastic hanger. So now they're doing with the cardboard hangers. We'll see how it can handle that, uh, again, to reduce those plastic costs. But the packaging itself, what's interesting is they're going with what's called a dual art packaging, which is something that for years, and when I mean years, I mean going all the way back to 1984, with Generation 1, has always been a one or the other. So what do I mean by that exactly? For years, how it always was is whatever the figure was packaged as, meaning like if the figure was in robot mode or if it was in car mode, the art would re reflect the opposite. So if you got 1984 G1 Bumblebee in car mode, the box art or the package art would be the robot mode to show both modes on the front. Obviously the back would show both, but the front at least would show one or the other. And in the case of like, let's say more modern Transformer product, now we get a lot of stuff in the robot mode and the art reflects the car, the jet, the gorilla, whatever that alt mode opposite would be. And that's how it's always been for years. It's how it always has been for years in the Western market, always representing the opposite. But here we get both. And I think it's more just because now they have the extra flat surface space because they're reducing the packaging cost. Now they have this extra cardboard across the front. So I think that their way is going like, well, now we got this extra space. Why don't we just do both modes for the art now and make the packaging even more collectible? And I'm telling you, it's making the packaging look very sexy. And it's making all the like the old packaging like Siege and Earthrise look boring as heck. Um, again, it has uh, Cybertronian for the names of the characters. The art looks absolutely spectacular. And if you look very carefully, you could see uh, the arc in the back of every single one of them chilling on top of a volcano. On top of a volcano, not crashed into one. And that's going to get into the next theme here. And it's the new collectability aspect of the packaging. And more so, what is put inside it. So with Siege, they had the UV light gimmick, which kind of revealed... Uh, a message on the packaging. The Earthrise had the map puzzle pieces, which you could kind of make a puzzle piece together. And this time around, now we have the Golden Disc card reveal gimmick. And what it is, is because the theme of Kingdom is that this is a time paradox, and that the Golden Disc 
uh, which is in Transformers lore, is a way to predict the future. And so every figure is going to come with a golden disc card. And when I mean every figure, the deluxe, the Voyagers, and the leader class price points. And they're going to come with a golden disc card randomly. And each one of these will have a character on it. And when you peel it back, it'll reveal one of their different destinies or futures that they could potentially change pretty much alter their future or change their destiny and that's what i'm talking about here it looks like the ark didn't crash into mount saint hillary or into the volcano it landed nicely on top of it and that in itself is a paradox because now they didn't crash land on Earth and go into stasis lock, the Autobots and Decepticons, they landed safely and now are in prehistoric Earth. And so that's the first paradox. Now, how they're going to do this, we don't know. Uh, they said that it's going to be randomly put in. Now, the card that was shown by uh, one of the Hasbro representatives, it shows Optimus Prime. Now, considering that they said here Deluxe Voyagers and Leader Classes will get the cards, by it being Optimus Prime on that card, that right away tells us that the cards won't be uh, figure-specific. And that's a good thing, because how it used to be in the past, like the last time they did a gimmick like this was Power of the Primes, where you got a figure, and it came with a specific card. Like, give an example. You get Power of the Primes Grimlock, right? And when you got his card, it had one of 12 possible different Grimlock cards that had each one of the Power of the Primes. So you would get a Grimlock card, you'd flip it over, and oh, it's Nexus Grimlock, which in this case, this Grimlock combines with teammates to make him stronger and each one had a little different kind of card and and um, like little pattern art in the corner and a little bit of a different description in the back wasn't too much of a big deal but if you were a completist that means you had to buy a whole bunch of voyager grimlocks to get different cards assuming you didn't get doubles and that would just be insane obviously you just you know hoped for the collectability in the secondary market and fans who buy these cards and don't care about them and try to collect the whole set that's usually how it's supposed to be but in this case, they're like, you know what? We're probably not going to have it that you have to buy like a million, you know, leader class Megatrons to get all the cards. We'll have it that it's randomized. They say here it's four waves of cards, 16 in total to collect. So I don't know if that means that each wave is 16 cards or it's just four waves and there's 16 in total. So it's going to be four cards per wave. I don't know how that's going to work exactly. Is it 16 characters or is it? 16 cards total and then each one of those has their own little destiny how many different destinies are there they were very vague on it but essentially what it is is you get a random card it's not specific to what figure you bought you just get a random card and that card has a sticker on it a hollow foil sticker that you peel back and it says a, one of many different destinies of that character so it's optimus prime and you peel it back and it might have him dead or it might have him turn into nemesis prime or it might have him i don't know a white repaint of ultra magnus don't take any of those as fact i'm just saying what it potentially could be under there and it's playing up the idea that the golden disc in transformers lore because it knows the future you could alter your future and so that's a it's an interesting collectability aspect and again i i respect that they make it that you know the deluxe the voyagers and the leaders all have them and they're not figure specific so if you you know you could get anything from any of those price points that you buy and it's not like you have to buy megatron to get these megatron ones so that's that's pretty cool that is one thing the last thing is let's go back now to what we when we first started discussing all of this stuff with the first segment that big piece of poster art that they showed us now they finally posted a more high-res image of it, and we have a better look at it. And man, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Like, just left to right, like, you could see Scorponok's hand is there, so you could see gears, um, which is pretty crazy. You could see what looks like sound waves, like, you know, gun and arm there. So is that implying that those characters are going to be in the Kingdom line? Are they going to be core class? Are they going to be deluxes? It's pretty crazy. Uh, as you move to the other side, on the on the right side, you see Rhinox, you could see Huffer, you could see uh, what looks like, I want to say, um, G1 uh, Inferno, like I said before, Trax, RC, Waspinator, the Ark, which clearly has now a face that looks like the last Autobot, so it's pretty clear who that's going to be. Gee, I don't know what I was trying to tease at. <laughs> 
a brown vector prime that was an homage to the last autobot i hope you guys got it after all this time um air razor star scream wheel jack like there's a lot going on here but it really shows that there's a lot of characters that are potentially planned and of course that polar claw that i'm excited about but there's a lot of potentially planned characters here when we look over to the leaked listings that we had in the past like the core class so you know they said rat trap optimus prime megatron starscream vertebrake and another core class so probably that crocodile maybe that crocodile is the last one there uh, then we have for the deluxes what was leaked and what we know air razor black arachnia cheetor slammer which is the uh, supposed to be a white tank that's supposed to go with metroplex is it a repaint slash remold of, of warpath we don't know shadow panther repaint of cheetor probably a generation selects thing uh, 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 excuse me um, yeah shadow panther warpath huffer pipes we see huffer now in this art pipes isn't really anywhere there but he's probably going to be maybe a generation selects repaint slash retool of huffer waspinator scorponok tracks wheeljack rc again they're all in the art there uh the deluxe fossilizers of paleo trex the t-rex uh, wing finger which is the pterodactyl and ractonite the stegosaurus from what we were told then we have the Voyagers of Cyclonus, Optimus Primal, Tigatron, Inferno, Rhinox, Starscream, and Dinobot. With the leader classes, we have Beast Wars Megatron, Optimus Prime, which is going to be probably a repack of the Earthrise, Galvatron, which we see in the art here, Earth Mode, uh, Ultra Magnus, which we see in the art here, which is different from what we got in Siege. And then we have... Because of this art here, we have Polar Claw, which we didn't know about, the Ark, which now we have a better indication of what's going on here. We don't know a Commander class yet, and there's a lot of weird stuff here and there. Scorponok is there and a whole bunch of others. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. I'm really curious what's going on here. Let me know what you think. This is, I mean, this is a lot to unpack. It's a lot to unpack, and we still got more segments to do later today.